Today we're going to talk about eSuite and the first release of eSuite is being called eSuite Care. eSuite is the new user interface, a set of new user interfaces that are going to be used for doing everything from item maintenance to customer loyalty. And basically everything that you're doing today in SMS Pro in the back office, you will eventually be able to do through a web interface known as eSuite. It's being uh, released into phases. And the first phase and the first release has to do with marketing and loyalty and it's being called care. This is, as I mentioned, a web interface. We're using HTML5. We're using the Sencha technology that you're all aware of now. And it's uh, the first uh, of uh, the uh, user interfaces designed for the back office. Of course, we introduced the uh, X store, the E store and M store for the consumer facing apps. This app is intended for the store uh, operation. So we'll begin with that now. Because it's a web interface, as opposed to what we used to use in a workstation where you'd have to install a client piece, there's nothing that needs to be installed in this case on the client device. And in fact, it does no longer matter whether the OS is Windows or not on the client device. As long as it has a browser, they will be able to use eSuite and access the store back office or the host, uh, in, if that were the case, to do back office duties. So what we're looking at right now is like the, um, the login screen for eSuite, for example. And so I would log in with my user code and my password just as if I was logging into SMS Pro. And the first page that will come up after login is, um, is kind of the dashboard. And uh, the good uh, about the new user interface is it's going to lend itself well to having more of a dynamic dashboard with graphical reports. So if I'm a, if I'm a marketing person, these reports would make sense to be about customer history, customer sales, uh, these kind of reports. If I'm a financial person, I'm using that portion of eSuite for finance, financial. Uh, I would see more, you know, financial reports. This user interface will lend itself much better to this kind of dashboard concept. So let's start with items. Uh, we're going to look at item maintenance and, uh, and compare it uh, somewhat to what happens in SMS Pro today, for example. So before we go there, we'll talk about navigation, though. Everything on the left-hand side, these menu options will launch what we call desktops when you click on one. So if I click on items, for example, I get a new desktop. You see, and if I click on customer, I have another new desktop. And I can navigate back and forth between desktops from the top menu. But I can also use the button over on the right called close desktop to decide if I want to close one of those. If I go back to customer and close that. Okay. In addition to desktops, you will have windows associated with each desktop and, and and sometimes you'll get in the situation where you'll have more than one window open at a time. That'll be normal. And you'll, you'll probably want to be able to navigate from one window to the other easily, especially when they're overlapping. So the select window will allow you to do that, switch between windows easily enough. Okay, put the focus on the proper window that you want. And the close window, of course, will close whatever window that you have the focus on when you click that. And I launch this and I finally we have a list of items tools on the right. Now when I click so on one item, for example, to whatever that uh, item will, you're in. So if you're working within items, for example, is shown in the context tool here. So it keeps it keeps uh, up and keeps uh, showing you wherever your, your pointer is uh, to uh, be able to do things like, for example, bring up I'm on item uh, boost drinks and now I want to bring up all the four tables like you would be used to in SMS Pro. I can click on this icon and see the, the uh, main item, the price, the POS, and the cost, what have you. Okay, we'll get back to that. But the context tools is for that. So related to item maintenance, now I can go into the sub-department of this item or I can go to the category or what have you. And down below, I will see activity log as well. So as I start doing maintenance and, and say changing the price on different items, I will have a list of those items under the activity log. Finally, we have the batch area. It's not uh, completely... Uh, uh, worked out all the batch, uh, but uh, this is basically where, for example, I could go in and select the batch and bring up the batch header, and then I would be able to explode that into the items that are part of the batch and work with that. But that's part of still in, in development. 
Now we've done a navigation, let's talk about particular details. So again, I'll go into items. And now, just like you used to use the filter before, you will have kind of a filter here that allow you to decide what items you want to bring up, for example, for maintenance. So now I can start by bringing up all the items. I can click here if I want to create a new item, and I'll bring up a, a kind of an easy, uh, quick uh, window for adding the most uh, vital information and creating an item. It's kind of a quick item creation window. But if I want to search for items, I can click on items here and then I have all the search criteria that I would have had, like for example, in SMS Pro, but maybe a little bit more user friendly. I can select from department list, I can add category, so I can combine criteria when I'm doing my search, and then I can even save that search and then come back to it later. For now, I'm just going to do an execute and bring up the whole list of items because I want to talk a little bit about how that looks. So now we've got a list of items in kind of a grid. So before, when you brought up items in the filter, you would have to go down to the price table, for example, after you highlight an item to change the price. Or you would have to go down to the cost table. And there was very little you could do with the items that existed as they sat in the browser, as we called it then, right? Like, for example, you couldn't decide very easily what columns of data show up in the browser. You got what you got. Now, there's a certain list of columns of information that will show up with the items, but you can always add your own columns. You can select between what columns I want. So, for example, I don't, I don't see the sub-departments for the items here, right? If I want to add that, I can just go to Columns, choose Sub-Department, say, yes, I want the ID and the description, and it'll add a new column. And I can move that column over to where I want it in the in the uh, in the actual grid, okay? And I, I can work with it that way. And I can even click on it to res resort all the items by sub department if that's what I want to do. But better than that, I can even come in and group all the items by let's say sub department or whatever I might choose. So it's a very dynamic, very interactive grid that you can work with and decide what columns of information I want. I can decide how it's sorted. I can regroup. I can do anything like that I want. And then if I want to do price changes, like immediate price changes, I can actually come right into the grid under price, for example, click there, highlight it, and then change the price. 29 cents to 25 cents. Keep going down. 15 cents to 13 cents. And you'll notice these little red flags come in the corner of each field that I change. At the end, much like with Excel, I can do Control S to save all those changes, or I can, if I want to use my mouse, I can click on the shortcut or the, uh, the Apply Changes button here. Okay, but there's a lot of keyboard optimization that exists now in the user interface. So for example, again, I have this list of items. I've decided what columns of data I wanted. I've been able to regroup them. I know I can make changes right in the grid. But let's say I have now got a bunch of items and I want to search for one particular item of what's in this grid. I can do a control F like you would do in Excel and it'll bring up a search. I can search, let's say for by POS description for an item that's in the grid that has the word red in it. And it'll bring me down there and I can keep going to the next item to the next item. Okay, so lots of tools that are very similar to Excel in the way that they work. Lots of familiarity, I think, with spreadsheets and for people, for our customers who are using spreadsheets, it makes it very easy. In fact, the ultimate goal here is to be able to even export straight out of here into Excel as easy as a kind of a copy and paste and import back into here from Excel. Let me give you a look at that, how that's going to work. For example, how easy it is. If I go to items now, without doing a search using the filter here, I can come down here and say, paste items from Excel. I'll go over to where I have a um, Excel spreadsheet open that I could have been an export from, from the user app. And now I want to bring it back in and highlight the column just with the UPCs in it. Come back to here, paste it with a control V, so I've only got the UPC codes that I want to work with in here and the title, the identifier to say that this is F01, this column is the UPC. And when I execute that, I will end up with those items and the details of those items from the database back into the grid. So it's as easy as copy and paste as I mentioned. Lots of other cool things about the IDER maintenance now. You, you notice these check boxes here. So 
lots of purpose for that. But if you can imagine, one example is um, I'm, uh, I, I want to do a global change. Now, global change is not complete here in this uh, portion of eSuite Care. But eventually, that's one of the reasons you might find the, the checkbox is very useful. Because as you know, before when we used the filter in the browser, it wasn't always possible to get just the items that you want into the browser. And so if there were a few items you didn't need, you would have to use control key and highlight the items. And it's easy to make a slip of the finger and you lose all the items you've highlighted. But now you can simply highlight all the items like that, uncheck the ones that you don't want, for example. And now you've got the specific items you're working with that you could do, let's say, a global change. Other thing you could do, and another good uh, introduction we bring here is the ability to do analysis on the items that are highlighted and do things like a subquery. So I did a search, I ended up with some items, and now I've got that list of items, but I want to do a sub search, a sub query on that list. I can click that, and of those items, now I want to know, for example, which ones have been selling, right? I could do a single total sales report. And look for, okay, of those items, which ones have I sold in the past, let's say, three months, what have you. And by the way, every time I do a report now within eSuite, I have options that I didn't have with other reports like we used to have. For example, every report can be a buy store report now, or every report, sales report anyway, that I'm looking at doesn't have to be just about what's selling. Maybe I want to look for the items that have not sold. So by clicking that button, I can do a search and a query based on the items that have not sold over any period that I select. I'm going to stick with what items have sold just for my example here. I'm going to, instead, of the, instead of the current store, which would be this store, let's say this is a host environment. I could go search for any target. And even the target search has improved. Now I have a search tool. And if I even know one store, I don't know the particular target yet I want to choose, but I know one of the stores that I'm looking for is, is within that target. You know, I can use that to do a search and, and bring back, I don't know uh, some of the names of the stores I have here, but I could do a search like that and find out which targets exist that, ha that contain that store, right? And then I could choose that target. I'm going to choose RAL for now, all stores, okay? Execute that, and now remember where I started. I had a list of items just by a search by criteria, and now I want to see which of those items or a selection of those items, which ones have been selling. So I run that report, and I can continue to subquery like that. In addition to subquery, I have linked query. What's the difference of a linked query and a subquery? Subquery is taking a, a base query that you started with and then digging in further with those items and seeing, okay, of those items, for example, in this case, which ones sold. In a linked query, it's not necessarily going from the items that you originally selected and then going deeper. It's taking another query that could lead to a whole different set of items and kind of combining them. So I could do a search for items that belong in one department, and then I could do a search for items that belong in one category and add those up into a single query so that I can do now a sales report on those items. It becomes effective when you're doing certain types of queries and certain types of analysis. That's some of the stuff. Let's look at what else we've got here. For those that were power users of SMS Pro, there were some things obviously that they brought to the table that people like, you know, and people became familiar with and they liked. And as I showed you before, if you don't want to do this kind of simple grid maintenance. You want the old SMS Pro with the four windows, each one with cost. I can just shrink this to be the UPCs and I can easily bring up those four windows again just by launching that. And I can still navigate through here through the item codes and it will refresh those windows just as it did before. But remember, I did a report to end up with these, a report in which had sales. This was kind of a sales report at one point. But even as a sales report, if it's got items in it, it's interactive. I can still do maintenance from that sales report by clicking on the item. It will refresh the details into the, the four tables, and I can, I can work with them to do uh, item maintenance. So there's not, they're not distinct anymore. It's all part of the same user interface. Even if I, I don't want all four windows open, go back to this view. But maybe as I'm working through here, I want to see the full price table. So I can click on any field that is part under the price section. 
and just hit F3, and that will launch me the price table. Bring up the full price table in this new web interface. And uh, if I'm in cost and I hit F3, for example, I'll bring up the cost table. Okay, so I can do one table at a time, POS, bring up the POS table by hitting F3. So lots more flexibility, I think a lot more power, but still make it a user interface that can actually be much simpler to use for those, for those end users that just want a simple grid, Excel friendly type interface. Other things I can do is I can decide how many items are within the grid, within the view of the grid, so I get fewer pages. Otherwise, I, I can go page by page, right? So that's a that's a whole bunch about items. Let's talk about some reporting, for example. So as because this is care, a lot of the reports that exist right now in this version have to do with customers and customer sales and customer loyalty including a whole section called KPI. KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators, right? So some of the kind of reports that exist there, for example, is a customer mix. Customer mix is a way to analyze your customer sales based on whether they were registered customers, whether they were loyalty customers, and so forth. So again, I've got this nice user interface where I can select between what dates I want by month, by year. By the way, we got a now the way to be able to show even a period, for example, I can choose week by day. Instead of just showing a week summary, it will show seven days of that week broken out. I can do month by day. I can do month by week. Again, more periods and more variation on how you want the data laid out. You will see that this user interface is going to provide a means to reduce the number of actual reports that you have to offer to the customer. You know, before an SMS Pro, you had some reports that would have order by as a selection, but some didn't. So even as simple a thing as if the customer wanted a report reordered a different way and you didn't have that selection, it would mean having to customize the report. Well, now every report they run, they can choose how they want it ordered just by clicking on the top, you know, the title of each column or by regrouping the report. This customer mix, here's an example. I'm gonna run this for RAL. So I've got all the stores there. Again, I can choose by store or not. In this case, I can choose by department, by operator. So all these various ways to help further break down the report just at the, by checking a box. And I can add criteria to that if I wish. So which customers do I want? Oh, I want to have customers and reflected in sales that are within certain department range or, you know, I can have operator criteria. So depending on the report, you will have different criteria selection, of course. Let me launch that. So we're going to get to what this report is really all about. So as we run that, now it's going to look back at the period I selected here. And it's going to give me some results to do with customer sales. And you'll notice it has results included into how many visits, how much was spent. But we've got these columns like registered, unregistered. This is to do with the type of customer that we're talking about. As I say, this is a customer mix. So it's a common thing for retailers who are doing customer loyalty to want to understand how their loyalty program is working. And one of the ways to do that is to look over a period of time and see, okay, how many registered customers did I have? What's registered customer, by the way? You know we're using SMS payment, for example, as the engine for our loyalty. In some cases, the stores may just want to hand cards out you know, loyalty cards, plastic cards to customers at, at will. Just take a card. The card will have a barcode. And when they go to the POS, they start scanning that card. They have yet to actually give any information about themselves as a customer. So there's no record in our customer table associated with them. But there's a barcode on that card. And so when they buy stuff, maybe there's a points program that they're contributing to. So it's populating tables that are associated with the SMS payment, but it's not yet populated customer table. That's a unregistered customer. They exist, but only by a card. Now, at some point, if you encourage the customer to register, give you their name, their phone number, and, and retailers will want to do that so they can better track the sales and they can report on it demographically and better ways to help understand 